Nicargo Baron Vitalski, Hargazan Baron Kosna Parat, Nicargo Baron Alzez Banmer, Sireli Zurek. Hokimen, Mik Nikaki Tangi Sportsitun. To all at the Intercultural Dialogue Music Education Pats Forum. I'm very happy that the Along with the EU delegation, we managed to implement this in initiative at the Comitas Museum Institute. Certain European music elements penetrated into our world starting in the 18th century. And our composer's art managed to be established in those years. It's symbolic that Today it is in Armenia that we are celebrating this event in the framework of the 150th anniversary of Komitas as well as the events that are organized in the framework of Armenia EU cooperation. Life and activity of Komitas was saturated especially in combination and search for the national and international that may serve as a bridge today in the framework of Armenian and European cooperation in all different formats. It is important for us today to be the the witnesses of communication in the European reality, the solution of the musical issues, as well as the development of the possibilities of new platforms for cooperation and uh, establishment of new principles. I'm sure that this matter will contribute to this goal. I'm very grateful to the European delegation in the Republic of Armenia. I'm also very grateful to the embassies of Italy and France in the Republic of Armenia. I'm also very grateful to the Ministry of Culture of Poland the Embassy of German Federal Republic, the Embassy, uh, the Goethe Center in Yerevan that have been cooperating with us and supporting us in the organization and implementation. Let me wish the bon voyage to the International Cultural Forum. Thank you. I'd like to give the floor with pleasure now to the Head of EU delegation of the Republic of Armenia, the Excellency Ambassador of the European Union, Dr. Sikorsky. Thank you. 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 Thank Armenia is a country with a deep, deeply entrenched love for culture. Armenia is a country of artists and culture consumers. It's sometimes for me quite moving when I see concert halls, philharmonic halls, full of people. The opening of the uh, music uh, festival uh, a couple of days ago, I couldn't see a single empty seat in the big hall. In a small country, still not a rich country. This is very important. And that's why we as, as Europeans, as members of the European Union family, we want to use more culture. As a very proud former student in German cooperation, I would like once again to take this opportunity to thank the Ministry of Culture for joining the Great in Europe program. I hope very much that this uh, decision, and Armenia is the first non-association country uh, which is a member of the Great in Europe program. I hope to bring the benefits. I know it's tough, it's very competitive, but I hope very much that you will see the difference. Uh, we will be holding our events. We 
uh, a wonderful figure, a symbol of uh, how important is the contribution of Armenia to the European culture. Probably not so widely known, but nevertheless a precious gem of the Armenian cultural identity. For me, Tomikas is the genius of sorrow. It's a pity he didn't create anything monumental. If he created something monumental, he put together Franz, Beethoven, and probably other big names of the European music. But he devoted his life to creating small things, pieces, preserving and elevating the, uh, the folk element, the folk music, uh, the popular music of Armenia. But nothing can be Comitas in the types of emotions he can arouse in your hearts. And he's European. We as Europeans, we do not need any preparation to listen to his music. I believe we, like Armenians, we uh, interpret him the same. Today we will be talking about music education. Music is important. We have to prepare, in particular, young generation uh, to, to face some Sometimes difficult notes, difficult compositions, but compositions which make our life, our personality, rich. I am a sport person because I listen to the music 12 hours a day. I cannot work without the music because I am not a musical person. Uh, I don't expect from my children to follow my pattern. But uh, I am a good example that music helps. Music make, makes our memories nicer. Music makes our thoughts deeper. We need music, we need more music. So I call very much today with the participation of uh, friends from European countries. Uh, we will be able to exchange experience, how to promote music, how to teach music, and how to make music more present in our lives. Thank you very much. Deputy Minister of Culture and Culture, Mr. Kudan Dunstan. Your Excellency Ambassador Sandowski, Your Excellency Ambassador, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great responsibility and a privilege to host in the Republic of Armenia, the leading center of such a reference, Italy, Poland, the representatives of the centers, and I'm sure that in the framework of this conference, it is of significant importance because it is held in the framework of cultural heritage. And it is not by accident that this event is being held by also a chunk of celebration of the 150th anniversary of Comitas. Indeed, uh, I presume it's at its pivotal point in the development of the Armenian music. It's given much significance to the musical education because it is due to the musical education that we contribute to a very eloquent inner world, uh, proper taste and proper perception of their needs. The work of educational and cultural centers and the promotion of the educational attitudes and attitude of any generation towards the education is of utmost importance. I'm sure that the exchange of experience will be one of the ways of holding this event, and I'm sure this is a perfect opportunity for it. Uh, distinguished colleagues, like we wish you effective and constructive work. Thank you. Thank you. I may uh, officially.
officially announce the opening of the forum and start with the presentations. Please, Tatev. I give the floor to Tatev Ikshavkulyan, Komitas Museum Scientific Section Manager. Please. First of all, with the process of development of Armenian musical education, there are phases. There are phases that are considered in historical cultural development, and the most important is the medieval music, with the medieval educational system developing. It is quite eloquent, quite consistent, and uh, at least visible for us from the 5th century and up to 16th, even 17th century, we may all consider this in the same phase. The next, which in size is much smaller, is the 19th century and the next is the 20th century, respectively, that are in principle strictly different and how, uh, to what extent they are related to Komikas, I will be telling you a little later. In Armenian reality, in uh, medieval times, we had schools, musical schools, and the schools, uh, of course, were in monasteries and in the church complexes. In our medieval schools, the teaching the learning process went in several different directions and music was one of them. You can see Tatsev Monastery right here, that was one of such schools. Another example is the monastery of Sanahin, which is in the north of Armenia. And once again here, we have another school of teaching music right here. And this is how they worked. You can see an area, this nef, the nefs. Uh, on this wall were the places where the teacher would sit and he would just go through it through this small tunnel and lecture for the students. This is another center where music was taught. And another very interesting example is the school of Galadzor. It is quite unique. I'd like to bring your attention to the stones installed next next to the monastery. These are seven stones, cross stones. They are divided into three separate and four separate, as you can see the demarcation line in between. All seven of them symbolize certain directions of science, certain disciplines. And here you can see how they were called. Yet this is a legacy of the Hellenic times. It was the ancient Greece of trivium and quadrium, meaning three level learning and four level learning. The system worked in Armenia in the medieval uh, times as well. We had the three, that was uh, grammatics, uh, morphology, and the four were astronomy, geometry, math, and music. Of course, uh, you can see the uh, system suggested by Euthagoras, and it was already explained by another system by poets. So I want to say that the system worked in Armenia. It worked in Armenia as a, essentially the main platform for musical education. But the music was a part of geometry, astronomy, and math. So uh, 
the musicians of the medieval period that were essentially the bearers of the information of the, of the data were our uh, famous Armenian uh, masters like Mr. Blashdots who created the Armenian alphabet in the beginning of the 5th century that is still being used. Uh, Saint Sahak Partev who was the um, Catholicus of Armenia. Ananya uh, Shirakatsi who was an astronomer, uh, also a mathematician. So uh, it may seem that he was a representative of a completely different sector, but in fact he was a musician. He, he wrote music and he also uh, gave his learning to his students. In medieval times, uh, notes, nunes, not notes, but nunes were also uh, created. They are called chazes in Armenian, but they are close to European nunes. We can see this writing um, that is in uh, Matena Daran, it's a medieval manuscript and a 15th century. Essentially, above the Armenian letters, Armenian text, you can see certain symbols that are music. These are musical symbols. And uh, the more developed version of it comes a little later. And uh, those who can read Armenian may clearly see that there are less Armenian letters on this manuscript. But uh, the ornaments, there are more ornaments than letters. Why? Because the development of the music or musical school or musical thought resulted in this type of expression of information. For example, in the 5th century, they would sing sermons. This was one of the most important uh, musical performance. And there was one new from Maestro Mashtoz. This is the example, etc. I'm not going to continue, but I'm not planning to uh, sing the whole sound for you. You can see that for every tone, there is the corresponding symbol. And in chazis or in nuns, the approach is completely different. It had to require a completely different approach towards reading a certain piece of information. I can bring another ornamented example so that you, you understand. In the 10th century, for example, the Gregory of Narek created the Sam of Havun Havun. This is also an Armenian medieval musical genre. As you can see, one tone contains several at the same time. In the next, you can see where it ends. I think it starts for quite a long period of time and then only the tone ends. So respectively, the writing of the chazis makes the corresponding difference. So this is a very important part of our educational system, musical educational system. Here you can see a certain amount of symbols that belong to chazis. These are chaz signs. And these were the signs that were put above the text, respectively teaching the corresponding music emanating from it. And this is the new notes, Armenian notes. Uh, I'm now going to the 19th century. I was telling you a little uh, ago that it was strictly different from medieval times and the reasons are quite more important, but I'm going to talk about notation in the first place and then I'm going to proceed. So in the 15th, 15th century, we can remember Hambartsum, the uh, general who worked in Constantinople. He was a teacher of music and while lecturing, he had the issue of finding the most comfortable method of teaching music to the students. Just for practical reasons, he created this notation. He took the signs from chazis, and based on those, he created this system of notation. In fact, there are seven, as you can see, that reproduce seven corresponding tones, with subsequent note coming in the notation respectively. If we compare this to the European or the Western musical system, that's uh, approximately the A, B, C, D, uh, F, etc. Meaning the seventh level is the, is the B flat. So, compared to the European Western music, we can see the difference. But, the interesting thing here is the Guido Varezzo system. It is very interesting that both 
are coming in completely different historical periods, but both created a system of notation just for educational purposes, for the purpose of teaching, meaning they didn't pursue the goal of creating something that had to be genius, had to remain in history, etc. They found just a comfortable way of teaching. So the most important thing in the 19th century is the establishment or the arrival of the Western model. It is in the 19th century that a lot of Armenian musicians went to study in Europe and in Russia, and it is clear that their experience had to be somehow then reflected or reproduced in Armenia, reflected in the Armenian educational system, in the composing uh, art and school. So this was truly a breakthrough. Uh, in our culture and uh, it continued persisting and uh, keep, uh, kept this process till nowadays. So by now we are the bearers of the European musical system and culture. Finally, Master Komitas, what was the importance of Komitas Vartapet in this process? I mean, uh, what was the importance? He studied in Berlin, and by the way, both in the conservatory and uh, separately, I mean, he, he attended the conservatory, but he was also at the philosophy department of Humboldt University. It was very important for him um, uh, to diversify the sources of his knowledge. So, the education, the learning, then cooperation with an inter international musical organization essentially played a very important role for the music of Armenia because it is through Komitas that a new learning model came to Armenia. I'm sorry for the size of the letters of the text. Okay, education in Gevorkian Academy, Komitas was a priest, and then Humboldt University Berlin, and then international musical company cooperation, and by the way, he was uh, together with uh, Oskar Freshel and Mark Zevert, so he, he was one of the co-founders of this company. And then Komitas started to develop a new educational model, or at least the idea or the approach to establish this new model. Uh, he started developing it himself, and the final phase that he had to implement but was left halfway was the foundation of the conservatory. Uh, it had to be done in Constantinople, and the Turkish government had uh, very significant plans related with Komitas. They were planning that Komitas would establish, would found the conservatory. We know that uh, Bela Bartok was invited to establish a conservatory in the Ottoman Empire, do music and teach music, but before Bela Bartok was even invited, the uh, Ottoman government uh, wanted to do that with Komitas, unfortunately it never happened because of the genocide, etc. So now, coming back to the school books, for you to understand what the uh, suggested educational system was, one of the books was called Musical History, History of Music, unfortunately left uh, unfinished, but anything it contains it gives a full picture of what he planned and how he envisaged. First of all, it starts from aesthetic issues, a number of aesthetic issues raised, what is music, what purpose it pursues, meaning the aesthetic part was significant before, was significantly taken into account before it turned to historical facts. The notations, the way to express music. We knew that many different nations had different ways, like Indians had Sari, Gama, Pata, etc. Other nations had different notation systems. So all these were highly signified by Komitas. Komitas mentioned and told the students about the different systems of notations in the world. It was not only about the Armenian he spoke of during his lectures. He also studied music among the savage, as he said. This is verbatim his words. And he studied and he wrote about that. He wrote how the, uh, the barbarian tribes would sing non-developed uh, aborigines, indigenous peoples of different parts of the world, how they would produce melody and what structure they would contribute to it. By the way, he, he compared it to uh, the speech of a child, how the child starts to pronounce sounds, and the same process happened among the savage tribes, as he said. And you can see the court sucks, all the stations, uh, historical musical works and treatises. Uh, by the way, Kurzaks uh, did not write this before Komitas. They were working essentially at the same time, and they even cooperated on creation, 
like the process of creation of these works. Maybe it came because of their common education, maybe because they were graduates of Humboldt University both, and maybe that is why they started thinking about these issues and then they included the corresponding information in their books, Gomitas in his works and uh, Kurzak in his, in his books. And the reflection of musical performances in all different parts of the world were so important in his book because he wanted to compare, to compare the music of other nations to the music of Armenia. He wanted to understand how it works in the neighboring countries. He wanted to understand what music the neighbors have in order to bring general algorithms, identify specificities and commonalities. And he also spoke of China with so much admiration about the musical development in that country, in that nation. It was admiration that is clearly visible in his book. He even reached Finland. So uh, we can see in his book that is quite a comprehensive approach of assessing musical performance and music and melody in general. This is just a pluck from the book in comparison of Greek and Latin names. There is another pluck Oh, in comparison of Arabic and Armenian tunes. This is tunes. So, as regards the elementary music, there is a book that Komitas has, and by the way, the museum has that book, just one sample. We're going to have a tour in the museum in the evening. You'll have the opportunity to see this book in reality. But the interesting thing is that in this book, he, he is based on Armenian notation system. He mastered the Western notation system very well, but he uh, created his book based on the Armenian notation system. Why? I am going to tell you a little later. I will just suggest uh, the option. In consideration of the specificities of Armenian music, the structure, etc. This is a piece of the music where the notes are narrated there, are linear notes, I mean. Now, what I want to refer to, Armenian music and Western music. So how Komitas managed to differentiate between them and how he gives the structural differentiation of the characteristics of this in all the tricks. Formulated this kind of an idea that uh, based on the music there can be that in all cases. Music uh, consists of tetrachords, so tetrachord is a sequence of four notes, but in one case these tetrachords are adjacent to each other, on the other hand they are attached to each other, thus conjunct and disjunct. This is what uh, I'm talking about. In, in European music uh, they, they are disjunct, and in Armenian music they are conjunct, like do, re, mi, fa, and the second, second tetrachord, tetrachord starts with fa, from the sound with which the previous ended, and we get the fa, so la, si, bemol. And this uh, makes the music completely different. If we manage to, to see the completely different, si, bemol, do, re, mi, and here we see chromatic sounds, something that uh, the European music does not have. So why? Is it important to, to understand from Komitas and music book? Just because here we have from Do to Si bemol and not Do to Si in Armenian notes of Dimajan, the note created by Dimajan, they reproduce this system itself. And probably this is the reason, that's why Komitas attached importance, importance to this. Uh, to, the, to the plank of Armenian model. I brought an example. I, I, based on an example, I try to introduce to you what I'm talking about. How Armenian music in fact differs, and how Komitas explained that. Uh, one of the famous uh, songs of Armenian folklore, refrain. Approximately, sounds like this. And at the bottom, 
One sound. Anyway, we can notice that on the top there is me bone, and at the bottom there is me back on the cards. This system is expressed in fantastic musical way. And for me, it is very simple to when under the different octaves, so one sound is expressed in a different way. Another book that does wrong is the first two harmony. And here we have he has the uh, expressed Western modern like Nora chords, Tesla chords. So all these issues are discussed in the Western model. And from the system, it is that he mastered all the textbooks of his time. In fact, his literature, his library was quite big. He had books, collection of books, and quite large ones. And here I brought certain books from there. Also he refers to the length, like uh, nine syllables, how in the nine syllables, how the sound should go, and what, what the calculation should be, how these sounds should relate to each other. So, briefly, the approach is Western. Here we have to say with regret that this work was undone, not completely done. Uh, we would like to know more, we would like to have complete picture of this, but it's not like that. That's another issue. To what extent is applicable in Armenian reality? The system is mastered by Armenian musicians so at our conservatory, they study, we have this uh, capacity, but still. The Western approach is dominating here because the, today's composers, composer learners, musicians, they all study based on the Western model, both on harmony, on polyphony, and so on and so forth. Our today's, this is my last idea, our today's system of education, this cascade exists, this is how we have, we have to come in schools where the students starting age 6, 7, until the age 16, 17. They attend it and they learn music, and they learn to play that instrument, at the same time they learn to study solfeggio, they, get, they learn theory, they attend class, choir work. And the second stage is uh, musical hobbies. Here they get professional education. And this means that they are on the way to become musicians. The third stage is the conservatory. Which is our uh, higher uh, education in Armenia? We have the uh, conservatory, and then we have a branch of it in Finland. And if a specialist or musician tries to become a scientist in this field and to protect dissertation, defend dissertation, then it happens at the National Academy of Sciences. So this is the system of education. Approximately, it's the, the same as the world has. At least in many countries have this. This much I plan to speak about. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Please. like about the history of music, about the specificity, stages of music development, even there are certain teachers who teach their notes. We have certain success stories here. Thank you for mentioning that. If we do not have no more questions, then I would like to ask Sankanai Ravirel Marcomina in Italy.
and like
know or don't know how to establish with other human beings. It still haunts the pain and joys, the facts and experiences determining ourselves. This relationship with contemporaneity becomes a determining factor in delineating from epoch to epoch the differences that characterize the generation of artists and in this specific case of musicians. The grand quest, however, is that unlike other artistic forms, music has always claimed to itself a kind of uniqueness of language, irreducible to another form of art, and in so doing has given rise to the idea of being self-sufficient. Not infrequently, on the contrary, it is very common that musical learning is based from an early age on the idea that all depends on a good knowledge of musical language or on the specific techniques of the instrument or of the voice to become a good musician. We will see going on in this paper that this erroneous and radical aspect of music, the for the cutoff of the imagination of the subject in its most complex and rich form, represent instead very often in the long term, and therefore in the construction of a long-lasting lasting musical career, a demotivating factor for the student, and worse, in a really formed musician, a real goal that often prevents him from seeing beyond his ends. The music then compared to the visual as fewer tools to give body and sense to itself, or rather as, so to speak, on the distance. If words reveal directly to reality and communicate directly without mediation, as well as shapes and colors, uh, the sound of too deeply affecting our society leaves instead of a semantic field to be interpreted that cannot be reduced to specific indication in terms of music as Forte, Piano, Alentando, Crescendo, without first inserting this indication into a normal music project that gives them meaning. It is not coincidence that we musicians should be considered primarily interpreters, activity that cannot be reduced to the simple respect of the indication of the score. So, here comes to play a first and fundamental aspect of the faculty of imagination that determines, in my opinion, a substantial difference between a simple performer and an interpreter. Being an interpreter consists precisely in the ability to have a project in music, ability to tie a musical content in its historical and artistic context, exploring which and how much content the composer has converged in the score, knowing how to recreate these elements in the contemporary dimension, bringing these elements closer to us and returning, returning them to us. An activity that in philosophy is called hermeneutics. This activity that combines at the stage knowledge and imagination. Knowledge provides the solid context that allows us to contextualize the musical score. The imagination investigates the score by rediscovering the characteristic elements that bring it back to its zero. Enlarging the interpretative horizon of the score and inserting it into a wider context of the To this knowledge and imagination is then a deep historical reality to which we belong, that makes us recognizable in terms, precisely in relation to our historical reality, but we may say also to our geographical origin or to our language. So, this is the first theoretical lab. Memory and imagination are closely tied. Imagination provides memory in a concrete material to give a body to the sounds, body and meaning that goes far beyond the sound itself, become in fact intention, gesture, lead, and not merely mechanical. Sounds become construction of a narration, story, dimension. 
All this makes the interpreter active on a several levels in the performative art, contributing to the nourishes performative memory that becomes less and less digital, photographing it as lacking of belief and oxygen. I'll propose now very shortly three operational models. The first is on Renaissance dance, so performing a Renaissance dance. On the side of knowledge, so it's always knowledge and the imagination are involved. Knowledge. The dance steps that actually the piece of this bird in Genesis served to accompany. So playing a uh, Renaissance dance on an instrument uh, has no meaning if you don't know the genesis of this work. And the genesis of the Renaissance period is for dance. If you don't know the steps, it's very difficult to play it in the right way. So knowledge, uh, knowing the steps of the dance. Close, the second one is close and relationship between men and women that were in love in the Renaissance. Because it's an era very far from us and the relationship during the dance. We must know, for instance, that the dance was the only uh, appointment, the public appointment between men and women. That was not a way to be retouched. You know? Then the main three is related to the musical practices of the Renaissance period. For example, there's one of the most interesting is uh, the Italian one because the, the Renaissance schools are mainly developed in Italy. So it's Fabrizio Peruzzo in Ballarino, which is a treatise about dance and music steps. In Renaissance it's 1581. The main treatise of Renaissance fields that provide legal information on concrete behavior in the Renaissance schools. For instance, Valla Stare Castiglione, il corteggiato, that means uh, the people that stay in the court, you know, with the prince and uh, whatever. And uh, it's a very interesting because told us how was the relationship between people at that age. So, 1528. Then imagination. In light of the prior knowledge, our imagination translates into conscious musical gesture, the execution of the musical pieces. In this case of the dance piece, the performance, the whole, doesn't move blindly, but is aware of the function of the musical form performed. So the performer masters it with awareness of the melodic and rhythmic structure. In a word, Act in acts memory proceed in some diosis. The Bachian suites, the problem is always uh, more important because the Bach dance had no dance actual uh, importance because in the Bach period the dance, the original dance doesn't work anymore. It's just a pure form, you know? So, the last uh, operational model, performing as another form, which one of the most uh, form that the pianist uh, like strings play and play. Knowledge, on the side of knowledge. Uh, knowledge of the formal structure of the is quite basic. Consolidation of the idea of bourgeoisie in the 18th century and the concept of dialectic relationship among social classes. I may just call of examples uh, Hegel and Marx. Uh, we have then satirical cartoons on the three states in, during the French Revolution and another painting uh, this is what this one is, uh, a sketch of the uh, French Revolution mm, uh, called uh, the awakening of the third state, the person on the ground, you know? And the other one is uh, uh, aristocracy and fear of it, I mean, religious, which were the most important two states. 
And this is okay, it's a lot of paper, this is the fourth state. And uh, it's, it's the, the, the website of the relationship between uh, social classes. But why? But why? why? The, the ability to understand and the form to transfer in the musical discourse, the sonata form, which has at this center the dialectic relationship between two or more things arise precisely from this socio-economic context and represent in the musical field precisely the dialectic between social classes. The sonata form born from the form uh, classical form when Bourgeoisie became the class that tried to face the aristocracy but tried not to be um, involved in the lower classes. So, the uh, bourgeoisie is the class that in that period uh, made the sonata form possible to born in the musical field. You know? And both are contextualized, social level, political level, and music forms. Uh, exposition, development, and recapitulation the main part of the sonata form, are therefore formal structure no longer restricted within the musical practice. Of great interest also in this case out between the 19th and 20th century, the interpreters have even embodied with social and musical dialectic, in relation to the concrete historical condition and relations among the social classes. So, form, memory, and gesture. Now I would like to consider the characteristic with which memory operates in other artistic activities that involve its use. I think mainly about theater actors, dancers, opera singers. These three forms of art have in common an important factor, fundamental for me, that they don't use the abstract form of memorization, as often happens among these two. For an actor, for example, but the same goes for the dance or the singer as well. It, it would be totally senseless to have an entire theatrical work in the abstract. I mean, without a single sentence being tied to a gesture, a movement on the stage, an intention, a sentiment to communicate, a human relationship with other actors, for instance, or with the audience, in the case of a monologue. In fact, pages and pages of words gradually become part of the life of the actor, which is able day after day to offer it to the audience. However, it does not mean that the actor's life coincides with the character he plays. It's a very romantic, but not a real idea. But rather that the memory related techniques provide precisely that holistic element of discussion. Feelings, gestures, intention of the playwright move from the character to the actor, who gives it value. The words, therefore, lose their static and become action. Real activity, how often have we experienced the difference between reading a text and listen recited by an actor? There is a complete difference became alive. Therefore, for an actor, the memory is partial. In fact, he memorized at the same time words, attention, emotion, gestures, movement, interaction, intention, emotion. At the same time, he said of dancers, singers, I mean singers on the stage, you know, opera singers, with their individual artistic specificities, I often wonder how can be difficult of a choreography that in itself is made of succession of steps or techniques figure. How a dancer succeeds in dissolving the technical elements in a flow of feeling and emotion expressed through the woman, through the body. The same can be said for us musicians. We are dealing with a succession of notes and technical difficulties. But in what, in my opinion, we are different, in what 
we are uh, different, you know, in difficulty. In my opinion, precisely in connecting the whole. Uh, in my workshop tomorrow, I, I will have the opportunity to further um, investigate this aspect and link to the totality about the graphic school. By relying excessively on the power of sounds and self, we forget the need to narrate something through music. And even before we forget understanding what to narrate and then how to do that. In other words, uh, our knowledge and our imagination struggle instead of collaborating to create a positive circle in which the musician could be a narrative actor. Our memory, the memory of the musician, is thus subjected to a rather harsh and deep stress. It is forced to operate without the necessary means to express itself in the best way. In my teaching and thinking about so with colleagues and friends, I often notice problems due to this type of stress. In absence of a real creative problem, the will of the musician is need to express itself through music or to make it a stable work activity is lost, fades. I often see excellent and working musicians lose interest in the concept of TV over the time. In some cases, we are losing interest in music itself. Many of these cases, in my opinion, can be traced back to the subject matter of this paper. So the question is, how can we place our imagination in the center of music? Our personal creative activity in the center of our performance? We have some past. We have some passwords related to the idea of connecting the world. Knowledge and imagination must go hand in hand from the very beginning of our musical training. And form, gesture, memory are in the dissoluble parts of the construction of the performance. I would say, in an entire concept program where the form, memory, gestures are both an integral part of the single music piece and of the entire concept program. I would like to point out here that for gesture, I don't just mean the physical gesture of the musician in a deceptive manner. I mean in fact also the gesture as an element belonging to the musical score. I mean rhythm, harmony, agogic, dynamic, these are gestures of the composer that must be understood and represented consciously by the musician. Of the, I mean, just an example, the third the Roman symphony, the first two chords, and the people will understand that are a kind of a screen or whatever like that, because he, he was so interested in the French Revolution, but very sad for the end with Napoleon. So, this symphony dedicated to Napoleon became a screen against him. So, the first two chords in the third symphony are gesture in, in this meaning. So action, the musician must have an active role in the concert performance. Action, not mere execution. Acting at this means grasping it with its reality and putting it on stage. Everyone in our way, you know. There's no one way to do that. No mission. This is a fundamental and innovative element which I personally care about. In the concert art, the question is what I am planning to do with it. Project. So that something can be narrated. There must be a project, a story to be told. The great privilege of music is precisely the possibility of telling endless stories told before. Each of us is a story to tell. Each piece, each work is different, playing for everybody, you know. In which we musicians are the key players together with the composer. So, uh, I want to go ahead, uh, speaking about classical musician and popular musician. 
So finally, I would like to introduce a very important element of analysis with respect to the topic I'm dealing with. It is about the relationship between popular music and classical music, or instead, uh, rather, between popular and between classical musicians. During my teaching activity, I have often, the, not, I often noticed some important differences in the approach to the way of dealing with music, the popular and classical musician. Uh, differences also present in the same musician. Musicians often divided between the concert activity, both in the classical and the popular or traditional field. Gesture, body posture, freedom of creative art, and above all, identification with what displayed are much more spontaneously constituted in the expression of popular musical forms. I'm pleased to remember on this occasion that here in Armenia I was impressed both by the beauty of the traditional repertoire and of such engaging and moving performances. I don't believe that this difference in approach is achieved only and simply by virtue of a greater degree of belonging of the popular musician to the repertoire in place. On the contrary, he confirmed my conjecture. In fact, the popular musician is a noble Full musician who knows the social, musical, and often political functions of the repertoire of performance. His approach is not holistic, connecting the whole. You know. This unfortunately does not necessarily happen in classical musicians, or at least for the most of them. I could say, for example, of myself that as a popular musician, my approach is lacking of something. In fact, since my childhood, my training has been carried out exclusively on the classical level. This makes me a performer of popular or traditional music much less interesting. I speak naturally of the traditional music of my own country, in this case, Italy. Often my instrumental skills are on average higher than a popular or generic player in the numbers I train. I think I don't know how to perform the popular repertoire satisfactorily for a, from an emotional point of view. Trying to go deeper, I think I can perfectly understand a pop song per se, for to play in general, that I found so easy to remember the chords. And I try to play it by ear, and maybe I don't play to play it at I play for my own Brazil. I don't remember four different chords to make a song. You know. In fact, my musical imagination lacks of a deeper element of knowledge and belonging to the popular repertoire of traditional culture. And its form and means does not motivate me to perform it, beyond the fact that my concept is another, another repertoire. This can be defined in a specific case as failure in realizing the relationship. And memory, which are very tight. Now, an important consideration must be done. Thinking of, of the great impact of the, of the, of the past. I, th I think musicians like Rostokovich, Andres Segovia, or Kim Imani, and many others, obviously, or whatever. I put these three Rostokovich, Imani, and Segovia. Because I was lucky enough to meet them at the beginning of my career, and I can somehow directly witness a very interesting aspect, or better, one of the aspects, you know, of their approach to music that I would like to emphasize here. But uh, we must remember that we have lots of database fields on these musicians, very useful to see to understand the, the, their way of playing. Given that, performative tradition of music has changed and continues to change over the decades. The, these three musicians I met mean, represent in a different way a musical approach far from the theological approach that today is decisive. Conscious of an executive practice coming from the past, they had the degree of interpretative freedom, probably legitimized by tradition which nourish the cult more of their personality, of their autonomous and in some cases arbitrary, arbitrary personal choices about this world, rather than the correctness with respect of the style 
of their curriculum that is put forward. Sometimes even the respect of the books of science on the, on the school, you know. I think in every age I see some criteria in every field. However, I'm hearing them talking about music in a lesson of a concert during a meeting at a dinner. Uh, meant to maybe enter into the imagination of these musicians. And if this statement is expressed by phrases such as play, play it as if, imagine that, or imitate this or that, man, precisely for this great musician to give young performers a part of the musical image, and with, and with it a kind of guiding image system for the performance. This image is of overflowing in which, in that position, also depending on our equally rich cultural life. Just access a photographic database to see how these musicians in general acceded to be frequented poets, painters, actors, directors of their era. Hence, the nourishment of the imagination, the relations, the relations among the arts and national To finish, I would say that nowadays, this is a didactic tradition that we can consider perhaps impressive, or approximate, or at least sufficient. The teaching methodology today, also because of the innovation that the musical theology has given us from the 80 onwards, uh, as well as an important process of renewal of teaching and teaching methodology, provides in fact a more rational scientific approach to the musical school and therefore to the interpretation. The progressive disappearance of the musical scene of this great performance has also interrupted this more imaginative tradition of the musical interpretation. At the same time, the classical musician appears today to be more isolated. Culturally speaking, more pure and focused on this personal engagement and therefore less present on the cultural political scene. The instrumental teaching itself in West areas no longer takes into consideration this imaginative and holistic aspect, aspect of which I will have the opportunity to speak tomorrow. However, with this paper, I would like to reaffirm the importance of recovering the cultural imaginative and holistic approach. In fact, today we have the opportunity to combine this approach with a scientific rational one, making the decision frame something more complete and effective. Um, I think at the same time it is very important today recovering the centrality of cultural and classical musician as a subject root in style, expression of his style. Leadership function then today at least in Europe and Western countries in general, is prerogative almost exclusively of the rock pop decision. Thank you. So, musicians that 
c'est que, euh, à ce moment-là, que euh, ce dispositif très particulier en France ont été préfigurés et ont commencé à être. Kitch Avenue, je crois que c'est un cartouchon à Ice Antasco. Mais à la Chine, quand même, pour Haïti, à Chapman, mais c'est un guitatsum, mais Haïti, quand même, je n'en ai pas. Je le fais rien, non, non, à Javna, quand même, à la Chine. C'est mané le hambar, à Azatelo, tu es un sac, quand je vais le tuer, mais tu es. در جامانه کی نمتنامی نشابت هکان میگه تو جامین، باید چنای جامین اینچی نپاتا کاش هنر پیکان ایدیال نیره پروخانسل یه کلی میچوت صف. Մորշակի սամանների է հասնում, որոմ կարդեն նշեցի մասնավորապես կաղաքական իշխանությունը, կենտրունական իշխանությունը աստեջանաբար սեզ է զբաղվել երաժ կաղաքում, պաճարնային է, որ մանկավաժներն են նրանցից կաղաժական որը կաղաքական գործիչներին են իվերջոն մողում են մտածելու։ Այսան հինք թվականին է Վրանսյայում, որ առաջին անդակով պահանջվում է ուսուցիչներից արվեստի շետևրերը այստեղ շատ հստակ է ներկայացում, Ուրեմ է երկեցողության և շետևրերի միջև իմսուն ուտվականին դա Սորվեջոն է, հագարդուարները պետք է կարողանար կարդալ այդ ողոտը, պետք է կարողանար այդ ողոտը, պատրազմից հետոն։ 38-ին, տեսնում ենք, 38-ին մենք աստիճանապել գիտակցում եմ, որ ժամանակին կան նոր ձեղնալոգյան էր, վոնոգրավը, նաև մասնավոր երաշտություն լսեն, ձայնագրված երաշտություն, եվ բնականաբար, աստիճանապար, � Արագանում է 70 նական թվականներից, բայց պատրազմից հետո արդենի սկսվում է, սա զանգվածայնություն է երեխաների դպրոց գնալում։ Եվ ասում ենք զանգվածայնացում, ասում ենք նաև այդ աշատերտների բազմազանությունն � մանում այլևը Սորվեջո ուսուցաներ երեխաների, փորձում են գորդը սյայում, թե եվ երբեք պարտադիր չի եղել, ուրեմը վլետայի պրակցիկան, այսինքը երբեք չի պարտադրվել պարշտոնապես, բայց համարյա ամեն որ � Եվ այն մի քանի մասնավոր մեխանիսմների մասին, որ հիշատայցի կիչ առաջ։ Չեն նշում, թե ինչ բովանդակություն պետ են, նրակ ճշտում են ընդհանուր կոնպետենցյաների դաշտեր մասին, այս կոնպետենցյաների դաշտերը հիմնականում նույն են տարբեր ձևակեր բաներ և կաղուցեր երաշտական մուշակույթ և արվեստագիտական մուշակույթ կնարկե զարգացման բոլոր հիմնախնդիրների հետ կապված միաս մի կարևոր կետ պետք է նշվի ունիցեյում, այսինքն այն աշմ են անցնում անտրետ ականկարծությունը, սա կարևոր կետ է երբ հոսում ենք բոլոր աշակերտների նուված պարտադիր կրտության մասին, 21 երունդարի բոլոր աշակերտները Վրանսյայում ամեն դեպում, թվում է թե ավելի ուրեմ են հասանելությունը անմիջական է, կան սովորել կարդալ ինչպես կան Սորվեջոյն և թե կրթության նպատակ չէ պարտադիր կրթության շրջանակներում։ 
La, la musique est enseignée dans l'éducation obligatoire et à ce qui m'intéresse, c'est de savoir donc, les écoles musicales, les centres euh, de culture et des musées. Parce que nous savons que dans le 21e siècle, Je suis un peu plus de 
դպրոցական այդ ծերությունների, թանգարաններ, այդ ծերությունների կերպով հետ, այն աստիճան, որ շատ մոշակութային կարույցներում այսօր ունեն հատուկ ծառայություն Հայցնում են ալի։ 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 Հայց